So looking back within the history of Mupai, there are a few things that kind of stood out that were really kind of impactful around my time. And after we had crossed in 2006, we did this big initiative service project across the campus and it was called Books for Africa. And I remember um, our line brother, Kalechi Ezekwe, coming up with the idea. And it was a really big thing that we did across the campus. We essentially placed donation receptacles in the residence halls, in the university center, and around where we had classes. And the student body donated books within these receptacles. We shipped them, we packed them up, and we shipped them off to Africa. And um, I remember distinctly, distinctly being very proud of that and proud of the fact that we were able to accomplish something like that on the campus. So, um, good memories. What's up, everybody? This is Todd Dowdy Sloan, and I am in New Jersey. I am at the Chisholm Community Center, and I'm getting ready to donate some blood or plasma or whatever it is that I'm donating. All right? I'm going to go inside and I'm going to see what's happening. All right? Okay. Okay, I'm here on the inside of the Community Center. Here we are. Whoa. Okay, I've never done this before. So, this is a little scary, but, but I'm gonna do what I have to do. Yes, come here. Over here. Going to sign in now. Okay, so, this is going to be a little longer than I thought. I thought it was just, you know, you say you set up an appointment, you go in and boom, 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 you're out. It's a little more than I thought. Gotta have to do a questionnaire. Questionnaire on the computer. And I got a whole book that I have to go through. So I'm gonna be sitting here a while. All right, so we'll see how this goes. All right, I'll be back. Okay. All right, so I can't donate today because my iron is a little low. Um, I'm three points off. Isn't that something? Three, okay? So, um, but it's okay, you know. Um, I'm gonna do it again, <clears throat> but I came here, you know, in, in service of, and uh, well, it is what it is, but I'm gonna do this again because Phi Beta Sigma always serves. That's what we do. Okay. This is Bonnie. Say hi. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. That's it for me um, for the moment. And um, I will do my service a little later on. But um, again, happy 40th. Bloody, bloody mute pie. This bloody, bloody mute pie, and my blood is just. <laughs> wow. Okay. Bye. Fred, this is Carlos. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit on some of the uh, charitable events that I that I do. Um, listed on that the, those pictures, most of them are bike rides. I'll tell you a little bit about some of those bike rides. I do the um, MS 150, which is a 150 mile bike ride for multiple sclerosis. We raise money for them. I've, I've, uh, I've gotten to reach the Silver Spokes, uh, which I raise over $1,500 multiple years. Also, I do the, um, can, uh, the uh, Miami Dolphins Cancer Challenge. That's another ride to raise money for the uh, Cancer Association. I also ride, do a ride called KID, which stands for Kids in Distress, to raise money for this organization that works with kids who have been abused and and broken homes. Um, also, the, uh, the picture there that you see me speaking to a young man in a wheelchair, that's from the uh, Special Olympics. Um, I participate in the Special Olympics track and field event as well as their bowling event. And if you've never done a Special Olympics uh, event, I highly recommend it. Um, 
those individuals, especially those individuals with, with Down syndrome, they got the, the biggest hearts in, in the world. So highly recommend it. So those are some of the events that um, that I participate in annually. And of course, I do other things, uh, you know, uh, breakfast with Santa at church and and an Easter egg hunt at, at church. Uh, but, you know, those were the big ones. Just wanted to mention on that. Okay, take care, Fred. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Bowles. I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, New Pi Chapter, employed at St. Barnabas Hospital, Tier Management Coordinator, 29 years, and um, this is what we do. This is the OR. And hopefully, our future can come and work here too. I'm a material management coordinator and what I do I order supplies for the OR and for the doctors with this pandemic it's been real rough we also in my department order for the command center for this COVID I've been there 29 years. I'm a essential worker. And I love what I do. And that's to help people. And I don't mind if I lose any blood on the way to salvation. And I fight with the strength that I got until I die. So I'm gonna stay. What's up, frat? Kevin Bethay here, aka Special K, aka Superman, Spring Line 81, um, number two on the line of the three goofy guards. Frat, I am so proud of you guys and so proud of, of the fraternity as a whole. Um, can't believe we're celebrating our 40th from Bloody Bloody Mew Pie chapter. Um, it's just been an incredible journey. And uh, what I want to tell you, I guess, is uh, where have I been, where I'm at now. Um, you guys know I played basketball for Kane. And um, uh, one day a, a, a young man approached me and uh, talked to me about the fraternity. Um, and I, I admired what the things that he had to say. And I admired the way that not only he carried himself, but the fraternity carried themselves as well. Um, it was the day he wanted to talk to me about Phi Beta Sigma. Uh, I got so interested that I, that I finally did... Go ahead and pledge. That gentleman, by the way, you guys know is Captain Fantastic, Randy Bird. Uh, he's the one that approached me about about the fraternity. Um, I, I graduated from Keene with a degree in computer science, and I, I worked the corporate world in corporate sales and marketing for years. Um, as you guys can see behind me, those that know me, they call me the magic man. I actually was teaching myself magic on the side back in those college days. And uh, I got so good at it that uh, people started hiring me for shows. Uh, so those years that I was working in the corporate world, I always did magic on the side um, for a little extra income. And then one day I looked at my financial sheet and I found out I was actually making more money on the side doing magic uh, than my executive salary. So uh, that's when I decided to take the plunge and become a, a full-time professional magician, which is very rare that you see African Americans uh, actually doing that for a living. So I've been pretty blessed with that. Uh, Fred, I've performed all over the world. I've performed on cruise ships, different countries. I've performed for celebrities. I performed in some of the, the biggest stages around. Uh, Monday Night Magic is one of the longest running off-Broadway magic shows I've performed there. I've performed at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. And of course, I do a lot of private events in uh, different hotels and things of that nature as well. So, uh, that's, that's, that's been really great. Uh, recently, I won, uh, Close-Up Magician of the Year from the uh, International Association of Black Magical Artists, which was a big honor, uh, different hotels and things of that nature as well. So uh, that's, that's, that's been really great. Uh, recently, I won uh, Close-Up Magician of the Year 
from the uh, International Association of Black Magical Artists, which was a big honor for me. I, I really, really um, was um, very surprised and honored that they picked me for that. Um, also, uh, in the early uh, 2000s, um, I was supposedly part of a television special um, called the African American Masters of Magic. Uh, this never aired on television, but they, they got the top black magicians in the country to be a part of this show, which I was blessed to be on as well. Um, it never aired on TV, but you guys can check it out on Amazon Prime um, if you guys have that. So I'm on there. Um, and also, uh, recently, well, last year, you guys know not only COVID hit, but the, the struggles that we were going through with social injustice and police brutality. And uh, another magic magazine actually approached me called Vanish, and they wanted to talk to me and uh, have me um, actually organize a series of articles that talk to black magicians and, and some of the uh, racism that we may have faced um, being magicians of color as well. Uh, that was a project that I was involved in that I'm very proud of too, where uh, again, I gathered some of the top mid black magicians in the world actually to talk about those issues. And um, last but not least, they, they blessed me uh, with an actual feature article in that magazine as well, which is Vanish Magazine. So um, magic's been great for me. Um, as you can see over here, this is my, my library. I have over a thousand books on magic that I've collected over the years where I've actually uh, taught myself magic. And um, that's what I do. I, I've been very blessed to be able to um, um, find a career that, that I truly love. Uh, as far as everything else, my family, I mean, I, I'm married. I have twin boys that are 22 years old. One is in Okinawa, Japan. Uh, he's in the Air Force. The other one is here at home still trying to figure things out, if you know what I mean. And I have a beautiful daughter uh, who's uh, 19 years old. She goes to Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, and she's studying to be a dermatologist. Um, Frat, again, very proud of you guys. You guys helped mold uh, me in becoming the man I am today. Again, I love you guys. Blue Fi, keep it up and keep doing great things, Frat. Peace. Although all the other organizations have greatness within them, Phi Beta Sigma is not short of great African American men. Our Black National Anthem was written by Brother James Weldon Johnson. The first black union in America came from Brother Asa Philip Randolph. He created the Brotherhood of the Sleeping Car Porters. But he didn't stop there. March on Washington, 1963, where Martin Luther King made his famous speech, I Have a Dream, so many people for so many years believed that it was Martin Luther King who initiated and built up the March on Washington. But it was actually Asa Philip Randolph. Another bit of American industry that you may not be aware of. Henry Ford is credited for coming up with the idea for the assembly line, which is where he built his cars and made his fantastic fortune. But it wasn't exactly his idea. Have you ever wondered why any manufacturing place that uses an assembly line is called a plant? Well, the reason is because plants move in an assembly line. They never deviate from it. They move the exact same way every time. And Henry Ford was given the idea to build a plant where his cars would be built in an assembly line. And that idea came from an old African-American friend of his by the name of Brother George Washington Carver. Another one of my personal favorites, a gentleman who was an actor and director in the 30s and 40s by the name of Clarence Muse. And if you've ever seen the 70s film Car Wash, you know that Clarence Muse is the gentleman who polished the shoes of Richard Daddy Rich Pryor. Daddy Rich, I've been following you for five years. Would you allow me the privilege of shining your shoes, please? 
Well, you know what they say. I take what is given unto me. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Daddy Rick, special polish. Wow, special oh. polish. Wow. And yet still another one of my favorites. An actor from one of my favorite old films, Cabin in the Sky, Brother Rex Ingram. Back in 2012, George Lucas came out with a film called Red Tails, and it's centered around the Tuskegee Airmen. I had a chance to go to a function where I was actually able to interview some of the actors. And also there were some of the last living Tuskegee Airmen. And there was a gentleman there by the name of Henry Moore, who was a Tuskegee Airman. We had a very, very nice conversation, and unfortunately, about two weeks after we spoke, he passed away. The crazy thing is, I should have realized with him wearing that blue jacket that he was a part of my fraternity as well. And on this guy, I don't care what anybody says. He chose Phi Beta Sigma. He chose us. So, and he did some very, very good things for the country. So, I'm not going to argue this. I am very honored to join the great Sigma men such as Dr. George Washington Carver, A. Philip Randolph, Dr. Roderick Page, and my great friend John Lewis, with whom I had the pleasure of working closely during my presidency. Now, I know everyone has seen this video and thought it was incredible, fantastic, and it was just really, really something to see. But I'm quite sure there wasn't a Sigma brother around who didn't tear up when they saw that head pop up out of the ground. That's giant man. The good trouble. To get in the way, we need to find a way to get in good trouble, necessary trouble, if we're gonna save America. When I first arrived at Kane, it was 1985, and um, I was fresh out of Shaw University. And I was a squire at Shaw University, so I was, you know, like all hyped up, ready to bleed blue and, and all of that. And um, there was a project that the brothers at that time had done, and I thought it was like one of the coolest things I had ever seen, and the university really, really took notice of it. It was a March of Dimes effort where all the brothers from the chapter and some neighboring chapters, they all came to Kane and for 24 hours, they ran around the university. That's a lot of running. That's a lot of running. 24 hours continuously. As soon as somebody comes back, somebody gets up and they gotta go. I have no idea how much money was raised because at that time, I was a squire. I, so, you know, I wasn't privy to that information, but I do know, I do remember that uh, it had made the newspapers and the university had talked about that for a long time, how Phi Beta Sigma was like really, really, really at the forefront. And, and I'm not just saying, you know, because I'm a brother and everything, but Phi Beta Sigma was really, really at the forefront at that time for doing projects like that. So historically, Phi Beta Sigma has always done great things at Mu Pi Chapter. And I'm gonna say something else happened in 1985. I had a class which was called Speech Communication. And we had to go see a production called The Mouse Trap. And I went to see the production for class and I happened to open up the program and I was looking through the program and I was like, but wait a minute, there are no black productions in this at all. I mean nothing, no Raisin, no raisin in the sun, no nothing. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Let me go talk to the chairman of the department. And I went and talked to him. His name was Jim Murphy. And when I talked to him and I asked him, he said, no, we've never done a black production. And 
I mean, as far as black actors, they're like very, very, very scarce. I mean, we never have, you know, anything. So I said, wait a minute. So no one, no black person has ever starred in a production here? And he said, no. And he had been at Kane since like um, the early 60s. Maybe even the 70s. Uh, I'm sorry, um, early 60s. And he said, you know, to his knowledge, like they had done Othello once and the person was not black. So, like, you know, what are you gonna do? And I was telling him that you need to have some black face, you need to do some black production, so forth and so on. And he was like, yeah, well, you know, it'll happen when it happened. And after a few choice words, he basically told me to take my black ass out of his office. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And well, neither did he. Um, but be that as it may, over the years, you know, I had made my efforts. I was making my stand in the theater department to say, you need to get some color in this. Moving past that, um, in 1989, um, I was talking with uh, Brother Harry Wallace and um, saying it was time to, to bring some more blackness to the university and it should be a black image at that college because so many people thought that Kane University was a black college way back then. And, um, you know, it was decided that it was going to get Martin Luther King a statue of him. We talked to the university, and particularly we talked to a gentleman named Pat Ippolito. Pat Ippolito was the man. If you remember him, Pat Ippolito was the man, okay? Dean, it was Dean Ippolito, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, it was decided that, you know, this thing was going to happen. And in 1990, a bust of Martin Luther King was created by a black woman which is a, a Harlem artist, and I cannot for the life of me think of her name, but I am in search of it. And the reason, and mainly why I'm in search of it is because, well, the university is kind of taking credit for that whole thing, and Phi Beta Sigma doesn't even exist. As a matter of fact, they don't even mention the black woman that was a black woman who created the bust. This is the kind of things that we were doing. That bust was historic. Um, lastly, from my time, going back to what I said about uh, the theater department and talking with the professor, over the years, I was continuously showing him that there are black students that want to perform, and black students want to do this, that, and the other, so forth, and so on. And in my senior year, <laughs> in, my, in my senior year in 1991, did a production where I was first African American to star in a production. First, to star in a production done by the universe. My heart still pumps when I think about it. You know, it was, it was a great, great well done production and um, something I always cherish I heard over the years that um, between the, the, the sweethearts and the bake sales and and so many other things brothers had raised like thousands and thousands of dollars like they had a huge bank account and they were able to do things at that time you know like I said that, that you know I don't know of because you know I was already gone but in terms of, of, of service, Bloody Bloody Mew Pie always, always, they, they would strive to do outstanding things. Outstanding things. Randall Robinson. Outstanding things to, uh, 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 to, 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 to build up us as a people and to build up us as a country. Bloody Bloody Mew Pie done a great many things over the years historically and when I found out about um, the books that they collected and went over to Africa as we all say call speeds on